on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. I'm your show host, Snowbike Mike, and this week we are sponsored by Rocket Money, Shady Rays, and DoorDash, but I'll tell you about that just a little bit later. Probably saying to yourself, Snowbike Mike, why are we just breezing through the housekeeping? Because, you know, it's great to be back with Paris. The Vegas boys, as they're calling us, are back, and we're here for the podcast We've remained on ice for a full week and a whole 30 minutes before the show. Gary, how are you feeling? I'm good. Did you and Mike have a good, uh, Paris have a good time in Vegas? Oh, let me tell you what. Paris, can't wait, I can't, wait to, can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Of course, as many people know, or if you don't know, myself and Paris went down to Vegas to one Spring Mountain Motor Resort and Country Club, Greg Miller. I, yeah, I saw the video you guys put up today, the, to, or the recap so video. I. A lot of country clubs. Yeah, it looked like, it looked, it looked like a lot of it fun. It looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it was great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To it looks like it would have been a really a lot of fun, yeah. A Forza. Well, you were, oh, it was, it was for Forza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, oh, I thought it was for a third-party thing. It was, so for, it was for an Xbox uh -huh. exclusive. Xbox exclusive. And Big you guys time. were like, we should send the X-Cast just... Yeah, all, all I mean, it's impressive that they managed to get the entire X-Cast crew out there. It's really, I'm really very impressed that they got that, yeah. Well, Gary, I mean, Gary, with the with the strike ending, you must have had you so must be back time. to work, right? So, I mean, that's why you couldn't go, right? Um, well, I mean, I get you wouldn't know because nobody fucking asked me oh. if I wanted to oh. go. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, Gary, it was crazy, Gary. Right? So they brought us out. Yeah, there. tell me. I can't. To, honestly, I'm all ears. I can't fucking let, wait let to hear all about it. About what happened with me and Paris because it was crazy. Greg Miller and yeah. Gary went. Of course, you guys weren't in attendance, but we got flown down to Vegas, right, for this big creator event. We went on to the track. We got to have two separate opportunities to drive awesome cars. The Cadillac Blackwing nice. on a nice little course. A little speed course, 45 seconds, dodging through cones, Gary, and start to go faster, slower, hard right, hard left. I mean, we're getting it, right, Gary? Then we took it to the big track and drove in these sweet Corvettes, and they let me go fast, Gary, real fast. Did they? Paris, anything to add to this experience? It was a lot of fun. That's what I have to add to it. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, being actually, you know what? Lay it on me. I think the highlight of it was actually the day before we went out to the resort and country club, um, because you and I were poolside. Had you know? Had, yeah, had I saw that on uh, on social media. Yeah, poolside. Yes, that that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and then that's we how I found out like that a... you'd all gone out there. <laughs> <laughs> that that leads me to to my favorite part. Uh -huh. So that night, all the creators we 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 got together with, with turn ten. You know, kind of a mixer, every little meet and greet. Sounds great. And during that, I said. Wait until Gary sees this. I cannot wait for his response. And sure enough, 5.30 in the morning, I saw the first tweet from you, and it was comedy the rest of the day. You, were liter you weren't there, but you were the highlight of the entire well, day. Well, I'm glad that Just even though I wasn't there for reasons that have yet to be explained to me, yeah. I was able to, you know, enhance, you know, your experience, even from a, you know, a, a, from a distance. We also went to a very nice steakhouse in celebration. Oh, my God. The steak and lobster was let's, 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 not over, <laughs> let's not overstate the steakhouse that you went to. I could see what it was from the plate. Uh, you went to a fucking <laughs> mid steakhouse. <laughs> Which one did you go to? Had I been with you, <laughs> yeah, 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 you, yeah. you might have gone to a decent steakhouse. But, you know, look, what, look, look I, no, I get it. it. Tell him, Gary. If there's, if there's a few things that, that are widely known about me, it's that I don't like Vegas. No interest in going there. A lot of people know that. I don't like cars. No interest in cars at all. I, these I'm are two sure. things I, that like, I think are widely known. You Vegas a lot. You like it. And when you got, when you had, yeah, when you got the when you got the Tesla, you auto drove it there like a right away. I remember those. Oh, big look at that! Like, a, there's a storyline that sh that demonstrates uh. how much I don't like cars uh. and how much I don't like Vegas. So yeah. I totally understand why in the conversation that no doubt happened between Mike and Paris and the good people at Microsoft and Forza sure. Motorsport. Uh -huh. Hey, should uh -huh. we invite Gary to this? You know, because if we're going to take two members of the X cast. It might look bad if they don't invite all three. Gary Shit. might possibly. But I mean, surely they Gary talk to you ahead of time. Surely, umbrage. Your, surely your two co-hosts <laughs> said, hey, we had this opportunity come up. So like, we're going to do this. We tried. We, you know, we couldn't mm. make it. They couldn't do it. You would think. Huh? Yeah. I think we learned. But apparently, one, yeah. um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe my, I've got, I guess my, my number, my email, my, my, my five different social media accounts. They must all have suddenly you check your spam. Maybe. Yeah. They, maybe they must all spam. have gone. They must all have just suddenly somehow you, gone astray. You check your hive account. 
We oh, is that is that high. is that where you sent the invite? <laughs> is that where you're on <laughs> yeah. high still? Yeah, that would ex that would explain. That it. would make sense. Yeah, that would that would yeah. that would try. Yeah, I mean that's that's I mean that's a much better uh, explanation than being fucking fucking flat out disrespected <laughs> and just fucking left behind like a chump. So Gary was left behind, and we drove fast cars, and we had a great time. So yes, thank you did. to everyone involved in that. But Gary, I thought of you, and I was like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That, you know what? Now that you've said that, it's, we all, gotta it's make, all good. That makes it so much right, fucking Gary. better. And so I want you to know, at the end of night one, they said, hey, to celebrate our cover cars, our cover athletes, yeah. we have special edition controllers. Wow. Oh, oh, well, I mean, that's another thing that you know about me is I don't like Xbox controllers. Sure. Yeah. That's why I have yeah. so few of them. You didn't, a couple weeks ago, bring in your entire collection. Yeah. No. Which yeah, meant you yeah, taking yeah, yeah. all no, your house, I bringing would, you I would do something like and that. And so what I did for you, Gary, is I got both of these controllers in my bag brought for you yeah. to celebrate an Xbox Elite Series 2 yeah. Blue yeah. Corvette controller right Ooh. there. Harness the rich 70 year legacy of competition innovation with Corvette. Yeah. Do you know where you can put do you know where you can put those controllers, Mike? In your back pocket so you can go home with them? You can shove them up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and a yellow Cadillac controller, your normal everyday controller. Yeah. From weekday practice to weekend podiums, challenge the field with design. So I made sure to get you two controllers because I care about you, Gary, and yeah. I thought about you on yeah. that one. What's funny, That's like though. like one step up from a fucking Las Vegas t-shirt at the get airport gift yes, shop. Yes, yes, You know, he thought and a, about And a you. fucking shot glass. And he thought, you know, to repay you with these controllers. Yeah. Uh, like, keep in mind that it was on an episode of Games Daily, Greg and Gary Witta, mm -hmm. where Gary was like, why don't you guys have an Xbox podcast? Yeah. I think I should do it with Snowbike Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm the only fucking reason this entire podcast exists to begin with. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's good. I mean, the important thing is I'm not bothered by it. Yeah, it's really, it's rolled off your back. That yeah. has been impressive. It's not like I have crippled, I have a lifetime history of crippling anxiety and insecurity about being excluded from things and yeah. left out because yeah. I, I, yeah. I constantly think people don't like me. That's not the case at all. Like, you're all good. Don't worry about that because that's yeah. not the case. Mm -hmm. Sure. So when I find out that, like, two members of the podcast that I basically created you did create. have been invited to Las Vegas yeah. and for reasons unknown... I've just been, you know, left behind. And Paris is munching down, you know, mid-level steak and fucking laughing <laughs> up at my expense. That's really all that matters because it's not about me. No. I, as long as my no. friends are having a good time. Yeah, yeah you're I'm a giver. Happy. You're a giver, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's one of those respect issues where it's like, you know, kind of like the president and the vice president can't be on the same plane, right? Like they need oh, is that, to, oh, is that what it is? They, wow. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm here I, to talk about the X screen. I, guess, I didn't realize yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what was happening. Oh, I guess, I guess, it well, I guess, it up. Have you not been paying attention on social media I've been this past busy. week? Because I have been fairly it, vocal about this. But you understand that I've seen it, but I'm never sure where the bit is. And it turns out there's no bit. Oh, it's <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sorry. Gary is happy to be back. We're happy to be back with Gary. Of course, we're back for another episode of the Kind of Funny X Cast. We have a whole lot of cool stuff to talk to you about. Of course, Turn 10's Forza Motorsport is now out and available for all of you best friends out there that want to jump in. To the early access of oh. course if you don't want to pay you can wait till next week to play on game pass but we're going to give you our early impressions of the game of course me and paris did go down to vegas to celebrate that fun launch but we're going to talk about our yeah let's see more about it so far and then we're going to talk about assassin's creed mirage and also greg miller and i are going to talk about this sweet piece of tech the x screen and how you can elevate your Xbox Series S gameplay on the go. And then so much more like the big leaks that we haven't talked about in two weeks, Greg Miller. I don't yep. know if you know, but uh, Phil Spencer's got some things cooking up over there at Xbox, it seems like, from these leaked documents. But let's talk about Forza Motorsport. Gary, have you gone hands on the wheel at all so far with Forza Motorsport? No, I don't give a fuck about that game. Okay, okay, I like that, I like that. Get Paris, what about you? Why would I? Microsoft, <laughs> the, the, that game obviously doesn't give a fuck about me. So why would I give a fuck about it? <laughs> I respect I respect it. I respect it. Uh, Paris, have you jumped in? What has your uh, race experience been so far? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's It's been interesting because obviously we've been playing it for a few weeks through the preview, and then we kind of rolled into the actual review period <laughs> of the game. I mean, I enjoy it. I, I, I think it's great. I think looking at some of the other early reviews, they're they're pretty spot on. Is it the perfect definitive next gen racer no is it's not and i think when i say that is because 
you need to judge Forza for what it is today, if not for what it potentially could be, because they clearly have a roadmap of content that's going to be coming down the road, which I will, that I do think will enhance the, the experience. What I'm finding is I'm just okay with the single player portion of it, of the campaign. The, the multiplayer is where it's at. If you you get on the track with some of your friends, obviously there's some of the driver tar AI that's out there as well, but that's where the real fun is is had. And that's where turn 10 with the way that they're going to be setting up various events and things that, that you'll be able to jump into where I think most people are going to ultimately gravitate towards, you know, once they kind of find those cars that they, that they love. Like, again, this is just the whole point of what they're talking about with this Forza where you'll probably settle on about five or 10 cars that you really like. And those are going to be the ones that you're going to take in the multiplayer and race with your friends. Um, I, I think the car XP portion of it to be able to upgrade your car, to be able to get parts and, you know, the tuning and everything that goes with that. Again, it's, it's okay. Oh. I, I do think there's some, some tweaking they could do to that to make it more, a, a more fun experience on the campaign side, the single player side. But I mean, overall, I feel like like if I was to put this on the kind of funny scale, I'd say it's four out of five. It, it's it's great. It's a fun game. Uh, you know, the visuals I've played mostly on PC are, are fantastic. The Series X, it looks pretty good, too. I've only played a little bit on the Series S, actually, but it seemed fine when when I did. But overall, I mean, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. The, the best way I can describe it is if you love cars, if you're into racing games, absolutely go pick up Forza Motorsport. I, I think it's great. Would you rather play this one, though, or Horizon? See, I'm glad you said that because I was actually having a conversation with one Mr. Danny Pena, and I'm going to speak for him since he's obviously not on the show, where he gravitates more towards that arcade experience. Yeah. So he's more of a Forza Horizon type person where I like the sim experience that Forza Motorsport gives you because Turn 10 has done a great job of, especially with this Builder's Cup, where people who are novices in, into sim racing, you can scale it up or down to, to whatever you're comfortable with, and you can still participate in these races and, and have fun. I mean, obviously, the more sim that you go, the more training wheels that you take off, the more XP that you're going to acquire, the more skill points that you're going to get, etc. That makes sense. But if you're a novice to this and you're used to more arcade racing, you can still jump into motorsport and kind of ease your way into the more sim experience and gotcha. then see if it's for you. And it's not necessarily going to be for everyone. So I, I think you need to be clear on that as well. Not everyone's going to love sim racing more. You know, people are going to like the more arcade style where you just hop in the car and go. Totally. But if you're into sim racing, this is definitely one of the best on, on the market right now. Because that was one of the things with me. I've been traveling with the Xbox uh, Series S and the X screen. And so when codes came through and all the early access was, I was like, oh, right. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, this is the sim one. This Correct. isn't the yeah, drive. Yeah. This mm -hmm. isn't the burnout kind of one that yeah. I like, you know, how much I love burnout paradise. I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to. I'll pass the code off and let other people play it. Yeah, I'm a big arcade guy. I am the Horizon guy. So getting on the track is a little more limiting to me. I like tearing through the bush. I like beating down on trees. I like getting yeah, lost. Yeah. So getting on the track is not my cup of tea. But, you know. Unless it's in Las Vegas. Unless it's in Las Vegas, then I really love it. And so I took those skills from Vegas into this. And I think the best part is I actually like the instant gratification that you get from the car level and the driver level pairs. I really, I love mm -hmm. that you have one overall level for your driver rank. That's great, right? But I like the instant gratification that you get with the car level itself. So every time you drive a car, you'll level it up. You'll unlock new parts to put on it to better tune it, right? But I like that cruising through practice mode. You see the level ding. You go from one to two to three to four. And I like that, right? I like the instant gratification that this game is getting for me from the car level to the splits, right? Nothing better than seeing green numbers on your screen, right? And I love that they tease you when you go into the first split and you set the time and now you come back on lap number two and you can see it's like, oh, I'm in the red. I'm going to miss this. Right. Or, you oh, I'm back in the green. Going, yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. hit that. And that's what I'm looking for, right? If I'm going to be in a sim racer that I'm, I'm not really familiar with, I don't love, right? I want to see that I'm currently getting better every time. And it's giving me that, which I really, really like and appreciate. Along with that, of course, I love the practice laps, right? Before every single race, you have the opportunity to do a practice lap, okay. kind of gauge where you're at, unlock more XP. So for me, I've done the whole first line of the Builder's Cup, comes down to about 23 races. You add practice races onto that. I'm probably at like 52 races now yeah. all together. I'm in on that, right? But I'm like, Paris, I want to play multiplayer. I want to play with my friends. I want to bang into them and laugh a little bit. I want to get better with them in more of a competitive sense. I, the Builder's Cup and the single player is fun, 
but I want something more. And I think that's what it's going to give me when this game fully releases with everybody else. Having, yeah, and um, having driven real race cars <laughs> around the track in Las Vegas, courtesy of the fine people at Forza Motorsport, yep. um, who invited the entire x cars crew out there to, to try that. How does that, how does that, does that give you a different perspective on the, on the, on the simulation? Do you feel like it, it, it makes it more, you know, oh, this is just like the real thing that I did in Las okay. Vegas with Paris and not Gary? Can can I answer that yes, one? So can. it's funny because I, I said this during during the thing when we were Thank driving the two Corvettes experts, two experts around yeah. the yeah, track. I mean, I mean, these, I mean, these guys know. I mean, they've <laughs> literally been there and done it. Yeah. We've done, yeah. It was crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we've been there and yeah. done Just it. Just look, looking we were, at the pictures on social media can't compare. So that's why I've got to ask them. You know what yeah. their what their first hand mm -hmm. experience was like. Yeah. So let, let me give you my first hand experience. And there so, it is. Look, with my yeah, with I my good friend Justin Zarek. Yeah. Yeah. All the top people were there. Apparently, no one left behind. Because it was a track and a country club. Look at that. It's amazing. Country club. God, that must have been so cool. Maybe one day. It was maybe one day I will reach a point in, I'll, maybe I'll reach the heady heights in you know, my own gaming career where I, I could get invited sure. to an event sure. like that. You know, it's, got it's not like, cracking. you know, you got two BAFTAs. Yeah, I may, you know, maybe I mean, win Xbox a couple more BAFTAs, ad, edit a couple more best -selling, world best-selling games magazines, sure. yeah, yeah. You know, do another 25 years in the business. Yeah. Maybe one day. It's nice for things you to do. You're going to get handed the exactly. keys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, important, it's important to have dreams. Were these cars stick or were they automatic? Automatic, but you could, could do manual yeah. if you wanted to. Uh -huh. I didn't see many people do manual, but uh, I know for sure I did automatic. Cool. I did automatic too. I, I do want to go back and answer the thing that, that you were saying just a second ago. Yeah, when we're racing the Corvettes around the track, at, at one point, I, I, it felt like I was in the game. I was even telling the devs that where you could take that experience from racing on a similar track within Forza Motorsport. And I had a very similar experience in real life with the, with the Corvette. So again, this is where I, I say, if you really want to get into the actual sim aspects of Forza Motorsport, you can absolutely do that. Um, I think the night driving was, was phenomenal. I really love that from a visual standpoint, when you start to add the, the weather effects in as well. And if you're simulating fuel and tires and things like this, where the true physics of the car come into play when you're on a track when it's wet or etc it's it's great it's fun but i will warn again that's not going to be for everyone because it gets freaking hard when you take the training wheels yeah. off and you really have to drive these car these cars and the different ones depending on the tuning and the parts that you've added to it the handling can be very tough in some of those situations and then you'll want to put some of those assists back on if you're more of a novice jumping into this but this is where i say they're it's kind of content light coming in at launch, to be honest with you. But when you see the tracks that they're planning to add as they move forward, some of the events that they're going to be adding over the next few weeks and months, kind of to Mike's point, once the general population of everyone jumps in on the multiplayer side, because, I mean, you can race up to 24 people on, on multiplayer. I, I think it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I do think some people will struggle a little bit with the single player portion of it because they want to just kind of hurry that portion up and get to the multiplayer side of it. But once they get there, I think there's a lot of fun to be had. I have one more question uh, to the Forza Motorsport experts because yeah. obviously they were at, they played the game the and, and, and real life. a lot about it. Yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. they're yeah. the experts. So I should defer to them. Does the game? One of the things I like about Forza Horizon is the the driver cars. You know, yeah. you can race against like ghost versions of people on your friends. Does mm -hmm. this game have that as well? It yes. has that, and it's really cool. Before every race, you line up in the big order, right? And you can scroll through every single person racing, see their outfit that they've chosen, oh, nice. see what car they're driving. I don't know if it's actually what Paris is driving, right? Because I haven't called him and said, hey, what are you looking like? But it is cool to see, like, oh, there's Randall Thor right there. Oh, there's my buddy Maddox. Like, everybody gets a driver tar, which is cool. I like uh, that. The, the reason why I ask is I, I have installed the game, and I was on 50-50 about playing it. But I'm thinking now maybe I shouldn't as a, as a favor to you in Paris. What I wouldn't want to do is take away from your sense of realism by yeah. you're driving around the track and you see me on the track and like, oh well this isn't like real life Dang. in real life gary wouldn't be there oh. so like, i don't want to <laughs> yeah, you know i don't want to do anything that would like take away from the sense of realism and the feeling of actually being on that track yeah. in uh, las vegas i like that because i feel like gary where you would shine is yeah. the rivals mode which i'm very excited about rivals is the time trial race where you race against the ghost with the next best time gotcha. and then you put yourself on the leaderboard so i find that's where I'm going to spend a lot more of my single player time is probably chasing those time trials nice. and then go into the big multiplayer one with the events. And then like yeah. the certain levels, of course, you can't have a certain car level pass, whatever. So you got to find the right parts to go into that race with. I think it's going to be a really fun time. 
And it, it's been fun. It's been a fun game, but you need to know if you go into it, it is a true dedicated on the track sim racer. And for many, it's going to get boring after two days, five days, right? Of like, you're not getting off the track. You're not going anywhere different. It's yeah, yeah. on this, you know? But yeah, it's fun. Okay. Well, I like this game. Check it out. Can I ask one final question? Sorry. Yeah. Love I'm it. just watching the trogs over uh -huh. on yeah, patreon.com yeah, yeah. yeah, slash yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, funny yeah. as they watch live. Kevin Asex says, I was there too, and I don't have a podcast. It was great, Gary. That's great. Wow. That's crazy. Well Mike, played. did you wow. bring your friend, well played, Kevin? Your friend, you do Kevin? That, Greg? That's crazy, man. That's crazy. We were bringing everybody. Huh. <laughs> but Gary, on the real, though, yeah. I met these cool jabronis, okay? On, on the side note, I met these cool, Paris will tell you, these cool extreme sports enthusiast kids. They're probably like 22 years old. Two of them, death divers. You ever heard of this, the Gary? No. Mean? They jump off of super high areas into water, and it looks like they're going to belly flop, but at the last second, boom, they kind of like crab up and shoot into the water, right? Kid was down in San Diego, went 105 feet on a deaf dive. It was awesome. These kids were good, good energy from these I kids. Did, I did that in um, World Games on the Commodore 64, Acapulco cliff diving. They dive <laughs> off of these. Uh, <laughs> what was the highest? What was the highest? I don't remember, but oh, I mean, that's that's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a it's a well known be, be, before before the jabronis took it over. That was a, a yeah, that's been a, a, a thing for. A, where, where did you meet them at the steakhouse, at the casino, or uh, they or were the, at country the, the country club? They, yeah, yeah, the country club. The yeah, country club. Yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. poolside, uh, they, yeah, yet, I love those poolside photos that you guys uh, posted. It was they, a nice pool. It looked like a lovely day. It had sand as well. It was cool. It was a what good was time. that? Kevin's trying to press. I'm sorry, I was, I was trying Please to look. I was trying to look for a death. Let's uh, let's videos. move on to another big game that's releasing this week as well. Assassin's Creed Mirage, <laughs> which I have played all the way through. I know Greg has put some time. I'm in. like five hours. Yeah. Gary, are you interested at all in Assassin's Creed? No, Where that's um, that's Leah's game. Leah like Leah's the the Assassin's oh, Creed player in the okay. house. She has a 500 hours in. Um, Odyssey. In Odyssey, yeah. she Odyssey had many, people. many hours in Valhalla, but she didn't like Valhalla as much as um, Odyssey. Odyssey. She's a woman of taste. Yeah, and yeah, also really um, has great taste. What's the Egyptian one? Origins. Yeah, Origins, yeah. Yep. She didn't like those two. Uh, Valhalla. Sorry, um, Odyssey was the high point for her. Yeah, this is why. Well, this is why. I'm um, with her. But it, it's interesting because I was talking to uh, Lucy James about it. Oi! And um, <laughs> and uh, I was asking her about it, and she said. Um, that she felt well, one of the things she liked, she felt like the Assassin's Creed games had been getting too big and too expansive. Yes, and and this one is more focused and contracted. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's what, and, and, and my wife has been making the same complaint. She's been saying oh. like these games are getting too big and too unwieldy. I wish they would like dial it in and focus it more. And it sounds like that's what they are doing. So well, Garrett, your wife is in for a treat because that is exactly how it feels and plays. Mm -hmm. uh, after fourteen and a half hours, I am. Happy to say that I had a good time with this. It looks, I this is my first it. time actually seeing footage from it. It looks oh, good. Oh, dude, it's gorgeous. Oh, it, yeah, Baghdad is gorgeous. It is old school Assassin's Creed right off the bat. You jump back in. It feels and looks just like you were back in the day. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with the kind of simplified feeling, right? I, I agree with all of you. Of I was overwhelmed with the RPG elements of recent Assassin's Creed. I didn't like pulling back a giant map and seeing level indicators like World of Warcraft yeah, and all. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted... Hey, here's the area. You're going to parkour all around. You're going to find the best way to stealth kill these targets and have a fun time making it your own unique experience. And this does that, right? There's some flaws to this game. I think the writing and story itself, not strong, right? I think at the end of the day, you're going to get out of the story and go, if you're not a, keeping up with Assassin's Creed, you're going to go, I don't know what just happened there. This is crazy. Yeah, that's 100% correct. Where I think, you know, what I uh, saw so five hours in, I played something like 65 hours of Valhalla and I played something like 130 of Odyssey back then. And Valhalla, I never connected with the, st the characters, the story. So I never bothered to see it through. I never loved Eivor. Uh, didn't like uh, Basim, of course, who's the main character of Mirage. Jumping in here, I think it has a very tropey beginning, very Aladdin. You're a street rat. You know what I mean? And then, of course, through hook, crook and, you know, misdirection, you end up be getting into the uh, guild here, becoming an assassin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The hero's journey begins. I like that part of it. But then we did the review. We talked about it. And I was like, Barrett, you can just tell me because he's like, oh, man, like, I'm not spoiling it, obviously. He's like, but the ending doesn't make sense if you didn't beat Valhalla. And I was Correct. like, ah, so you got to tell me exactly what happens. And he told me, and I'm like, yeah, that would be quite the left turn from the story it starts as, as it is just ba are, are they origin. trying to do like a back to back to the roots kind of thing with this because this is if i'm right in saying like, like a smaller game yeah less expansive not you know none of that creep that we've seen come into the franchise over the years 
And it's the first time, I think I'm right in saying, the first time that they've gone back to a previous setting, right? And so, that, the, the original game was like the Holy Land, right? And now we're back there. I wonder if it, if they're trying to like say we're going back to like the basics. So of the Assassin's story Creed. goes with this one, Gary, if you haven't been following listeners and viewers, right, is that this started as DLC for Valhalla. Okay. And the more they worked on it, the more like, you know what, this could be its own thing. And so, yeah, they did its own thing of a smaller, yes, they've talked about it trying to be back to what Assassin's Creed kind of started as, but also having the modern improvements of it and da 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 And so it is like somewhere in that medium. Are they is, still doing the modern day Matrix shit with this? The yeah, time yeah, traveling? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absurgo I've and all that been, jazz. I've never yeah. been a fan of that. Agreed. The other thing that Leah was complaining about was she likes to play as a, as a female character, which the last sure. two games let her do. Right. This one doesn't. I wonder why they, why they undid that. Well, re, again, this is Basim. He's from Valhalla. He is a character that you meet in Valhalla. So okay. he's, already, he's already established. This okay. is meant to be like, kind of like, how did he get to who we meet in Valhalla? This is the backstory, his origin of becoming an assassin. Okay. I mean, there's an argument to be made about whether or not that creative choice is worth more than giving the player. But the, I mean, the then choice. At, at there, I think we're like, let's have our cake and eat it too, right? I think, oh, well, they're too expansive and there's too many choices and there's too much RPG stuff. All right, well, we're going to bring it back yeah, and give so. you a character like we gave you Altair, like we gave you Ezio. And the best part, of course, is that this is its own thing and we're still getting Assassin's Creed Red next year, right? Which is going to be another, you assume, yeah. giant open world RPG. Right. You choose your own character who right. you're doing in Feudal Japan. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I know Leah's excited to play. It should probably be the next big game that she and, jumps into. So. And this was the thing. When we got codes and we went out the night one, Barrett uh, texted me basically my exact thoughts. And he's like, we're back, baby. Because it was like, you jump in, you know, I'm like, oh, right. I forgot how much I just love the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Assassin's Creed. And that's why for the trophy beginning, I didn't care about it. It, mm. set, it set the stage and the stakes, and I was like, great. And then I was off to sulking through bushes and killing people and, you know, doing my synchronization points and chasing down these things. Yeah. And there's a bunch of, like, new little mechanics in there right of like how investigations work and faction or the tokens that you're using to get bribe people and stuff like i'm having a great time with it if, if spider-man review code hadn't come in and i'm not one of the leads on that i would have stayed and beaten this all the way through did yeah. um did ubisoft fly you in paris out to jerusalem to like parkour on buildings and hide in no. bushes and shit because yeah. obviously i i wouldn't know if that had happened so you should have saw me well you would have you would have seen the photos I would have have seen, that's the photo. right yeah. that's right well i don't know i mean maybe that's next week it's still oh uh, the embargo yeah. embargo got yeah. it got it got okay. it yeah, I, look, I look forward to, to seeing that yeah uh but yeah i really like this game uh, i'm happy with where it came out i do like the smaller reduced look of it there's a couple of fun things i really enjoyed right like I like the pickpocket mechanic. Oh, that pickpocketing is so good. In very game. well done of like making it a fun, quick time event. Um, I do think that we could have elevated it a little bit more. I felt like I wasn't rewarded for really stealthing the pickpocket of like maybe creeping up or calling him over to a bush. It very much felt like, oh, you could just walk, just walk up through the street, press beep, the beep, pickpocket beep, button, and if you do it, you do it. That's great. I do want to give a little bit of criticism for the uh, combat. I feel like hmm. multi-target combat does not feel good. Okay. It very much feels like a, hey, you should focus on stealth, maybe take someone on one-on-one, -on -one. but once I got two to three targets coming at me, whatever was happening with the targeting, the reticle, the parry system just did not feel as smooth as older Assassin's Creed's. But and again, I was like, ah, this isn't as good, you know? Right, And I, but again, cake and eat it too kind of thing, right? They're trying to give you a different experience, and they're trying to go back to Assassin's Creed 1 and mm -hmm. 2, where it was, hey, you can die. You, you're just work from the shadows and be an assassin, whereas like, you know, for me in both Odyssey, especially late in game and Valhalla, it was especially Valhalla as a Viking, right? Just like walking to a place and be like, ah, I have fucking common and you're axing them and killing them and doing the brutal finishing moves and da da da. Like this is meant to be be slow, use distractions, do that thing. And again, that can yep. that you can have criticism of that, I think, but I think it is like that's what they designed this one to be. Yeah, all around good time. Paris, any interest in this one? Yeah, yeah, just real quick before we move on, because I think you you guys have all hit on on the exact points that I would have said anyways. This this was a nice return back, back to basics for Assassin's Creed. But my I look at it two different ways. If this would be your first Assassin's Creed experience, I think you would walk into this and have a very enjoyable time. I mean, you know, the story, the story's, you know, so so. But I think this is a good entry point into Assassin's Creed. But I think to kind of what Greg was talking about before, when I think about Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla, by the time we got to Valhalla, I was kind of just burnt out sure. on that that particular type of Assassin's Creed. But what I think potentially could happen, going back to the traditional way of Assassin's Creed, I think they'd be better off mixing it up. You know, a couple games this style, a couple games the RPG style, so it you know, differentiates each other so we don't... It, so it doesn't become stale. That's basically what I'm trying to say, because I think that's what originally happened to Assassin's Creed. By, I think what was For it? Sure. Syndicate. By the time we got the Syndicate, 
we were like, okay, God, let's go do something else. Then we got Origins. Now, by the time we got to Valhalla, we're like, oh, God, let's go back to what we were doing before. So I think we could be in this endless loop. But with Red coming, and they're obviously really investing in the Assassin's Creed franchise, I think this could be a good stepping off point to kind of just mix the two genres together. So it keeps it fresh, you know, you know, as, as the years go by. I, I do hope they do that. I do hope they do that. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's next from Assassin's Creed. This got me back into it. I, I liked Vo- yeah. Origins. I stopped at Odyssey and Valhalla. I was like, nope, that's too much for me. Yeah. I like this return. I hope they keep it like this. Uh, I'm now back on the, I'd like to see more Assassin's Creed. I really enjoyed the stealth playground of it all. Of like, choose where you want to go, pick your distractions, get in there however way you want to do it and uh, make it happen. So a good one right there. But we have some more fun stuff to talk about here on the Kind of Funny X-Cast right after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Did you burn your last piece of toast? Have the avocados gone bad? Is the hot sauce bottle empty? You can try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. You already know how much all of us here at Kind of Funny love DoorDash, but with thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or they'll make it right. You want even more value? You can save on all of your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. With easy substitutes right in the app and best in class customer support, you can get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code KINDA at checkout. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code KINDA. Don't forget, that's code KINDA for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. You can try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Again, that's shadyrays.com. Use the code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills all in one place. And it has surprised multiple of my friends and people at Kind of Funny how many subscriptions they have that they forgot they are still paying for. That's why I'm such a big fan of Rocket Money. It's so easy to cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bills and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kind Kind of funny. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Greg Miller, we have brought you on to a very special X-Cast because you have been using the X-Screen from Upspec Gaming. Of course, they sent us over two X-Screens, you and I. You have a very special one. I have one as well. Of course, many. Wow, everyone's got one but Xbox me. Now, fans. before you do one. this yeah. shit, I did, I, I'm the one who rec- I put on Trello. Does anybody want these things? You didn't respond. I, I'll, you can drag these guys through the mud. You're not going to ruin Greg, good Greg Miller's name. I, I, have, I have no recollection of that. Well, I know that our friends over at Upspec Gaming will be watching the episode. They're very excited to hear our thoughts on it. And I'm sure they know that Gary Witta 
would love to talk. Look at this, not just the, the Series X, S, but the black one with the extra mm -hmm. uh, storage. Yeah, the whole terabyte. Very, yeah. Yeah. Very and so impressive. many they call this uh, orientation the Oreo. I found out. Oh, the Oreo. That's what Upspec called it when they were like, hey. "Oh, we see you have the Oreo configuration, yes. the black and white." I was like, uh, "I oh, goddamn." Of ready. course, many of you know if you're an Xbox fan, you have seen the X screen in many Twitter posts, IGN articles when the Xbox Series S released. This is a portable screen to go alongside your Xbox Series S. I have a lot of the specs that I'm going to give you right now just off their fact sheet to get and, us going and, and just if you're an audio us. listener that connects to it i don't know if we said Connect, that yeah part, i'm right? gonna tell so, you right, okay, exactly cool. the x screen is a fully integrated folding screen that seamlessly attaches onto your xbox series s this transforms your device into a laptop form factor that can easily be transported and used anywhere there is a power outlet it has a 11.6 inch ips screen which is the largest screen available to fit within the xbox series s Footprint. It's 1080p with 60 hertz refresh rates. Uh, also, a perfect match for how most games are optimized on the Series S. It has an integrated se uh, stereo speaker system, built in controls for screen settings and volumes, and cable free attachment solutions for only just the power cord itself. So, Greg, you've taken this around with you. Yeah, so the. X screen journey begins over on patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can get all your exclusive stuff, including mm -hmm. the show Greg way where uh, a kid had written in and was asking, Hey, like I'm about to go on a family vacation. Do you think it's worth pa packing my Xbox or da -da 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 for Starfield? This is in the pre the run up to Starfield. And I was like, well, I can't comment. We didn't have Starfield yet at the time. I don't think I was like, I don't know if the game's going to be good or not, but if you did, you could do this X, Y, and Z. I travel with a console. And if you're going to have an Xbox Series S, like that's so small and so da, da, da. And then I started talking about, I had seen this screen. You had talked about this screen. We've seen it and thing. I was like, damn, wait a second. Like, I'm pretty stoked for Starfield myself. And I'm going on that family vacation pretty much right after it. So I hit them up and I was like, hey, me and Mike would love review uh, units to actually talk about this eventually to put it through its paces. They were very nice enough to do it. <laughs> and what it actually turned out being is that we got them. But we got Starfield so early that by the time I got them, I also got my cyberpunk uh, code for Phantom Liberty. And so I had requested an Xbox code for uh, Phantom Liberty and took this on the road with me and was playing it on the plane, was playing it at the cabin we were at up in uh, Canada. And then since then, I you know, had to go, sadly, to a funeral in Missouri. I took uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage on it as, on the plane as well. Again, like, you, this is something that, again, Gary, perhaps the wisest man, that kind of mm -hmm. funny. Uh, said a long time ago on a games daily. I remember it sounds super funny and dated now, but where he was demanding cross save and cross play. Yes. And the fact that we are now there where I started Mirage on a lark where I'm like, well, we're going to have Spider-Man soon enough. So I'm probably not committed to playing this all the way through. And also I'm, I like, Assassin's, I love Assassin's Creed, but I'm not jazzed for this one. I'll just try it. Played it that first night on PlayStation. Sorry, X cast folks. And then came into work and immediately hit up Ubisoft. I'm like, you know what? I'm getting on a plane tomorrow. I have the Xbox screen. Can I get an Xbox code? They did. I brought my save from the, cl the cloud over, picked right up where I left off from my PlayStation on my Xbox, and we got to go. And, I, you know, it's one of those, like, I'm doing the Van out white hands and stuff around it. And, you know, uh, I was going to say, it's like, a, like on the price is right. Everyone's marking got a, got out for it a bit. It, yeah. This is not a sponsored thing. This is just a device that I truly unabashedly love this one dollar drew this <laughs> this is a five out of five on the kind of funny scale. oh wow great. i've had yeah, an yeah. amazing time with this the fact that it has worked the way it's worked the fact that yes like you know uh you shut it right i have it i have it on the feet right now that you i you use on the airplane stand right they sent stand i was like i don't get it and then they showed a photo of somebody using it. i was like ah and that's how i did it because of course otherwise you're hunched down looking at the t the tray table right you put it on the little feet stand here and stand it up and it yes. then gives you the ventilation but then you're I level with it perfectly on a plane. Uh, on the back right, I, my only complaint would be for it is that you can't Ethernet into it. So the way this Correct. plugs in, right, you, pl you, you put the screen on the back, especially if you're an audio listener, right, it goes into your HDMI port. It covers up the USB port as well, and it also covers up the Ethernet port. And there's Correct. no Ethernet port to it. But you do have your memory expansion and then mm -hmm. your power cord, which is it. And so... It is traveling with this thing, just needing a power cord. And then, of course, you know, your controller, some uh, headphones for how you're going to do it. If you're going to do it, there are onboard speakers. Again, another beautiful thing. And for me, it hasn't even just been a travel deal. Like, again, it was on the plane using it. Holy crap, this works. It looks great. The screen is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Then it was getting to the cabin, finding out they have a... 27 inch flat screen from 2011 and being like well this has better the screen is better here laying on the couch playing it on the couch using it that way right and then even now being home like i think like a lot of people who like to use their room for what it's meant to the bedroom right sleeping or sexing oh you know what i mean you don't put a tv in there it'll, it'll screw up both of them 
So when uh, Jen was uh, gone, uh, she was, uh, you know, up to my, uh, Canada herself. Well, yeah, but I have a TV in my bedroom. And That's my wife incredible. And I have sex all the time. Sure you do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. All right. Listen. Let me tell you something. You know yeah. I'm coming on the uh, on the Love and Sex Oh, podcast. I didn't know you were coming yeah, on gonna, Love and Sex I'm stuff. Gonna, I'm going to tell those fucking jokers. They, I, I watched that last one. That they don't know what they're talking about. Fucking, I, they haven't got a clue what they're doing. Nick's begging for sex. He doesn't understand what's happening. Talk to the old man. But anyways, uh, Jen was out of town, and so I was watching. I was playing games downstairs, got tired, came upstairs, and you're like, you know what? I want to keep watching wrestlers, a dynamite show on Netflix. Everybody should watch. Not even, and if you don't like wrestling, it doesn't matter. It's a, just a great documentary about a small business. Uh, anyways, seven episodes. I was like, I can watch on my phone. I'm like, wait a second. No. Busted out the power cord, put on the X screen. Laid, I had Cole on one side curled up, the X screen on the other, just watching Netflix. When I was, oh, yeah, because you've got the, the media apps on there. Exactly. Well. When it was done, I, you just fold it closed like a laptop. It knows to turn everything cool. off. Yeah. Like, I'm so impressed with the speaker. Onboard speakers are good enough. Like, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm not Tim, so it's not like, yeah. who are the surround sound? I don't know what the hell any of that crap is. It, it does what I want. It works. And again, like, the looks and questions I got on the plane, like, people were so amazed by this. A, a, were people a, actually asking you about it? The, it was like out of a commercial. The flight attendant was coming by with trash. He goes like, what is this? Is this a PlayStation? I'm like, no, this is the Xbox Series S. And I've got this X. And she, and she just goes, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> and yeah, walked away. I was like, does. this is like out of a commercial. Using it on a plane is 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 obviously a great use case. Yeah. Bit of a crapshoot, though, depending on what equipment you're flying on, right? Because not all planes have, presumably, presumably your seat had like a power outlet. you could Right. And that was one of the things when I tweeted about it, Andrea Renee tried to step up and I knocked her down, you know, but she was like, oh, I thought I didn't you know. I don't know. I'm not up on my plane technology anymore. Mm. I We flew Air Canada, obviously, to Canada. That worked great. And then I did two flights for United that were, you know, not puddle jumpers. They were regular ass planes and they had their power worked as well. I, I was worried about power consumption. Cause I remember back in the day, like Virgin America, they would cycle rows like, yeah, right. you can use it, but you can't all use it. Uh, and then also I was worried about sometimes I feel like I'm always worried about the plug falling out or getting jostled yeah. stuff. On, I, I've used it on what four flights, and I have not had a disconnect. I've not yeah. had a power thing fall out. I've not also had if the game, you know, these days when a lot of single player games st still require an online connection, yeah. you might be out of luck there as well. That's true, of course. Then you get into that. I mean, you could also like Diablo or whatever. You ain't that ain't happening. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, probably right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've been so impressed with it, so happy with it. Again, yeah. it's like it's it went from something I wanted to try out and review, and now it legitimately is that thing. If I'm gonna be on the road, if I'm going to be moving or whatever, like I want this as an option. And, you know, you talk about it, like, of course, again, cross pr progression. Diablo is on this Xbox Series S. So I have everything, you know, ready to go from anywhere I want to do it. But I've, I can't say enough nice things about it. It's, it's interesting. I think it's a great little gadget. I'm sure I'd like it even more if I'd had, you know, been sent one like everyone else and had the opportunity to test it. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm fine with it. You don't check it. the Trello. That's fine. on you. He's you fine don't with check. It. He's fine with it. What's interesting to me about this is, first of all, I would love to know what Todd Howard the Christopher Nolan of video games would have to say about you playing Starfield <laughs> on the screen this small. But in all seriousness, what, you know, it, it's interesting because we've seen this on the Steam Deck, right? Some games run fine on a Steam yeah. Deck. And Steam Deck is a screen that's smaller still. It's still a decent sized screen. Yeah. But some games just don't run well on Steam Deck because when they shrink down that small, the text just isn't legible. When console games typically are made for screens, like even the smallest TV is bigger than this, right? Console games are, when developers are designing games, they're, they're, for t they're, they're for TV screens. Sure. Right? Um, very few TVs these days are this, are this small. Um, did you notice anything in terms of like, because the screen is small, like things weren't legible, or was there, like, was there any downside to playing on a much smaller screen? I mean, the downside, of course, is how close are you? You know what right. I mean? Like I mentioned uh, playing in the cabin on it, right? It was that I was playing on the arm of the couch. Like right. I was sitting, I, I, I couldn't put it back where the TV is, right? And then granted, I have old ass eyes, so it's something probably too. But like, I didn't notice any visual bugs or anything yeah but yeah obviously there's a lot of detail in a lot of games on a lot of screens a lot of menus if you're playing something like starfield as well right so that's going to be in the eye of the beholder what you can do but for what i was doing on it it was great and it was like you know for me a little mind-blowing experience of just like i remember flying home for christmas it doesn't have a lot of weight either no 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 you, dude. even if you just take it off and give them just the screen itself it's impressive how this the feels, screen, yeah, the the screen feels like nothing. Yeah. Like Greg said, right? It's only one cord. It's still just your regular Xbox cord. It gives you the opportunity to put in your storage expansion card, which I currently have in. That's my only critique is my fingers are a little fat to get a good hold of it to get it out. Sure. But you'll get it out eventually. Get some tweezers. Um, get a you know, get a splinter out of there. 
But I've been very impressed with this screen so far, as Greg has said. And Greg has given it all the love that it deserves. I talked with the team. I asked them, hey, what are some of the things that maybe people forget or want to know more about? Uh, They say the most common question is, why is it 1080-60 and not 1440-120, which is Mm. what the Series S can output? It says they come down to two things. The biggest panel that exists that will fit within the Xbox footprint is 11.6, and there is no 120 hertz screens in that size. Two, most importantly, though, is it's really important for us to have the X screen with no extra cables. So just yeah. that power. They don't want you to have multiple power cords needing to be And that was the out. thing. If you remember, I obviously travel a lot. And so I've had a bunch of weird shenanigans on how to do this. And for a while, I was using that game screen with my PlayStation 4 where I would take it. And that thing, yeah, looked like a Frankenstein's monster. It worked mm-hmm. and it was a bigger screen and all these different things. But it was like. I had the USBs coming out of that into the PlayStation trying to power it. And, da, 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 da. and I think, no, it didn't. But it had HDMI coming out of it as well. So it was like there was a million different things. Whereas, yeah, this just looks like a laptop. It, and that little Xbox laptop that I'm carrying around. How much is it? Now, over on Amazon is where they're selling it through. It's $209.99 right now. Of course, if you want to learn more, that is up spec Gaming. That is U-P-S-P-E-C Gaming. You can go check out their website. You can check them out on Amazon. Two hundred nine ninety nine right now, currently on sale on Amazon. The only thing I would, I, I think it's great. I think it's really cool, and I can I can see a million different ways that that people would would uh, get good use out of this. The only maybe there's a reason why they looked at it and they couldn't do it, but like if they were doing like a second rev, yeah. The only thing I would want is some kind of Ethernet <coughs> pass through. That's like, what I'm like, saying. Like, can you at least That's pass it through? No. I hate gaming on Wi-Fi. You just never know. That's you know, what I, I would feel better with a cable. That was my thing with it. And again, I think it's again meant for use cases. So it was for me like, all right, I'm getting ready to go. And it was, you know, take the take the screen off, pop in download the Ethernet, everything. download yeah. Assassin's Creed, make all that stuff, make sure it was all set and then yeah, popped in. Uh, another big one, of course, if you've been watching on YouTube, you notice that it folds like a laptop on top of the Series S top of it that is where one of the main exhausts is and you're probably saying man isn't that going to get hot maybe melt the screen of course that is something they did take into account closing the screen on the xbox could be a fire hazard as the xbox series s exhaust heats out the top black vent and it can get quite hot we realized this early in development and added sensors to our x screen that work with the custom pcb to send a power off over to HDMI signal when the Xbox is getting too hot with the screen. Yeah, so when you get it and you open it up, right, it comes with a little pamphlet and it's like, hey, go into your settings on your Xbox and make sure you enable X, Y, and Z. And one of them is the fact that you enable on it that other devices can turn off, turn on and off your Xbox. So that, yeah, if you just close the, la- close the lid like a laptop, it'll after you do that, it'll turn off the screen and then turn off the Xbox itself. I like the Black Series S as well. It's my first time really seeing it. Oh, it's yeah. cool. Now, Gary, of yes. course, you got a new Series S. Do you want to tell me about that? Because I know that was pretty important. Yeah, that was another one where I got like massively disrespected. There's so and much dis- They said that to slap you over here. The, well, not, not, only, not only did they send it to Greg. <laughs> did you see it? They, they sent it. They, did you see the thing with the guy wearing the X-Cast T-shirt? Did he really? You That's didn't awesome. see that. Yeah, it was Cam. I fucking lost the plot. I'm like, yeah. I, 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 a never-ending source of, 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 of merriment for Paris these days, apparently. <laughs> Just, he's, he's probably got a Twitter alert for like any time I lose my shit on social mm-hmm. media because he fucking cracks up all the time. Yeah, over yeah, it. tell me. Somebody, so, like, as you know, I'm all, about the, I'm all about party animals. Our, it's our goatee and we should, right now. I, I, well... <laughs> hey, hey, Gary's hey. got a little bit of sense and reason. It's like, my oh. goatee right now. Somebody said to me the other day, oh, every game, Gary, your, your game of the year is always the last game you play. Like, yeah. fuck, I, I, I don't know where that came from. No, it's not. Like, for me, uh-huh, tell I me. said that Starfield could possibly become my game of the year. Yes, it hasn't, did. right? Because I haven't played enough of it to get there. I haven't had the time, but I will get to it. Oh, yeah, I want to see what a game actually looks yeah, like running on it. Enough, yeah. um, party, because, you know, I like Fall Guys. Mm-hmm. And Party Animals is like, basically, what if Fall Guys but only griefing and toxicity. So yes. That's why it explains, Gang, explains why you fall, like it so guys. much. You know, I do. Most toxic no, man in gaming over here. Um, <laughs> and a real life, apparently, to oh, his real I, friends. I, 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 I mean, that's, that's the <laughs> thing. To his real friends. Like, oh, Mike's so surprised. So weird because, like, he's the nicest guy in real life. Yeah. But, but they so don't know. toxic when he plays. They don't know. <laughs> it turns out <laughs> also know. toxic in real life, though. You hate so, to see it. Anyway, I've been I, I've been party animals this, party animals that. I've been very, very vocal about how much I love party yes, animals. you have. Next thing I know, I turn on social media, and there's a guy with like eight followers 
wearing a kind of funny X Cars T-shirt, saying thanks for all the amazing party animals merch. Party animals. Like, what the fuck? Who is was it? On? You said you knew who it I was, Paris. I, I don't even it's know. Cam, it's Cam Hawkins. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> they're sending it. They're sending the good shit to the X Cast fans. Uh -huh. Not he's in the industry. Not, not, <laughs> the X Cast. Mr. X Cast. One creator. The the brain. The brain behind the entire thing. The, the, the brain trust behind it all. Mm -hmm. Mike, I anyway, forget. What's the what's the I, what's the I, embargo on Assassin's Creed Mirage? Are they streaming that yet? Can I open it or no? Uh, yeah, people are streaming it now. Okay. Early access. I mean, didn't we just talk a whole bunch about it? Yeah, well, you know how review embargos and streaming embargos are different. Not oh, that I'm like okay. streaming, streaming. I just want you said let's open a game. I want to make sure. Anyway, yeah. so you know, as what, one thing that I, for any uh, baby influencers out there who want to learn how to be like me and uh, get some stuff. Obviously, not everything, as we've learned, uh, but some stuff. Um, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yes, it does. I, I, ma I made a lot of noise. I acted very indignant on social media about why uh, the great Gary Widow wasn't getting this party yeah. animals uh, uh, stuff. Because there's plushies as well. Mm -hmm. My kids would love those, right? But you got, this, you got the Xbox Series S that's branded with the party animals on it. They so. did. They, okay. well, the, the they saw the air the, in their the way. The plushies are on their way. Okay. And the I, did, I did get the very nice exclusive yellow um, party animals Series S with a very nice... With Nemo on with, the front? With, with Nemo Big on Nemo. the front, Nemo yep. the Corgi, and a very nice um, party animals themed custom controller as well yes yes it looks very nice oh there. and also the other the other very nice thing that mike said they sent us a, they sent me a code because you know they do they have the new design lab now with uh, the shift colors the metallic yeah. colors oh um they sent me a there's a code that you can put in uh to basically get like a free you know design your own controller and so i gave that to leah and she's she's designed her own new controller and it's very classy and it'll be here soon it's like a pink rose gold yeah. kind of shift vibe that's it nice. looks really good. Oh. So all credit to Microsoft, apart from, again, completely um, <laughs> forgetting. I, 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 don't, I didn't forget. It was clearly a conscious decision uh, not yeah. to invite me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, what I, I like is that you've made it clear, like, that they can never do that again. Well, I mean, they can. Or, I mean, what, I, what I've, I, think, I think what I have made very clear is I'm not bothered either way. Like, they, you know, they, they, He's they not bothered. He'll really never good. be bothered. They you can do what they him. want. No, not you. Uh, so yes, that is the X screen review with one Greg Miller. He's turning on I want to see this. Assassin's see Creed okay. for you. Of course, you can go check them out. Upspec Gaming is their website. You can find it on Amazon. It is an official product you can purchase off of the website right there. Go check it out. Myself and Greg. Greg, give you the big. How review. are the speakers? How's Love the sound it. on it? Would you want to put? Would you want to have headphones on ideally for this? Uh, I had headphones on just because like I'm out in public and stuff like that. But I found the speakers to be just fine. When I was watching wrestling. Exactly what I needed. Yeah. 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 You'll see Greg playing it on your screen if you're currently watching on YouTube. Gary, what do you Turn think of the bit, performance? So yeah, take a look for a second, Gary. Get your face in front of that. I'm going to say, that's actually quite good. And I'm at an angle, so I'm probably not getting, like, the full mm -hmm. brightness of it. Yeah. I, I've been impressed, like I said, I you know. that's cool. Playing Cyberpunk, playing this, both games look beautiful on it. Guys, we have one more piece of news to talk about before we end the show. Of course, two weeks ago, there was a big Xbox leak thanks to the FTC trial that is finally finishing, but not over, but just continuing to drag on. <laughs> it's finishing, but it's not. It's, it's doing a thing. Fun news out of it. We got a lot of leaks about Xbox's future that we haven't got to talk about here on the Kind of Funny Xcast. So I grabbed a couple of the big ones from IGN and beyond to talk about with you guys because they want to hear your opinion, Gary, Paris, and Greg, because I was on the Kind of Funny Games Daily episode when we talked about this. But I know we want to hear from my gaming dads all about it. I do want to start off in Paris. I think you said it so well. A lot of these documents are old. Things change. As Halo Master Chief 117 said, the plan changes. It always does, right? And things change. But Big Philly said that too. Big Phil Spencer wrote, we've seen the conversation around old emails and documents. It's hard to see our team's work shared in this way because so much has changed and there's so much to be excited about right now and in the future. We will share the real plans when we are ready. Of course, Paris, you said some really good stuff about leaks and you know what that puts out to the team and the industry and everyone as a consumer on the outside. Uh, do you still feel that way right now as I prepare what we're going to talk about here? Yeah, I mean, I do because the, the whole point of a leak is it's something that you weren't supposed to know whether we like what was said or don't like what was said or whatever the case. And, and when we talk about this Xbox leak, I mean, the, you're, you're talking about stuff that came from three years ago, potentially even maybe even longer than that. Things change. They like you just said, they change all the time. But the unfortunate byproduct of this is there is now 
somewhat of an expectation for them to deliver some of these things that was in the leak. And maybe that's just simply not the direction that Xbox is going to go now. Like, as an example, an all digital series X, I think it makes sense, of course. But what if they don't do that? Now people are going to complain. Why didn't I get an all digital series X? Weren't supposed to know that. And, th- and that's how I look at it. These this is the unfortunate byproduct of all this Activision stuff, the FTC. I mean, we found out things both from Microsoft, from PlayStation, et cetera, that was not supposed to be for public consumption. And, you know, you may have an idea, like, I don't know if you want me to just jump into it, Mike. Let's jump into it, that, anyone. Yeah, the fact that Phil Spencer even talked about Nintendo. Um, Microsoft has been talking about trying to get Nintendo since 2001 <laughs> when they, with the original Xbox. It's It's not shocking to hear that type of ambition, in my opinion. Would I want it to happen? Absolutely not. I think that would be terrible for the industry. I want to be crystal clear. But again, these are internal conversations that were happening. I mean, obviously, ultimately, they acquired Bethesda, and here they are trying to acquire uh, Activision right now, along with some of the studios that they grabbed along the way. They're trying to build their business. They're trying to build whatever their ecosystem, you know, is going to be. We we obviously see what what the roadmap looks like. I mean, some of the stuff for what the potential future Xbox could be, you know, utilizing an ARM CPU and some cloud tech. Sure, that sounds great in concept in 2020, but is that the reality of what that system's going to be in 2028? We don't know that. You have no idea. But now there's an expectation that they're potentially going to do that. And if they don't do it, now it's a bummer. Now it's a disappointment. That's, and I'm not trying to say this to defend Microsoft or Xbox because I don't necessarily agree with some of the things that I saw in the leaks, but the whole point of it is you weren't supposed to know that. And that's just how I see it. We weren't supposed to know. All leaks are bad. I, I don't care what it is. They're, 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 they're not good. I mean, look, let me be clear on this. There are some things that leak, obviously, that are completely nefarious, that it's good that the public knows about it. So maybe that'll force a company to change direction. But I think these leaks that we saw, they're, they just simply do more harm than good because I think they give the community a false impression and a false expectation on what potentially excuse me, for potentially what Xbox could be doing, you know, the rest of this generation and then going into the next one. And if they don't do it, now there's disappointment. So that, that's just how I see it. Well said there, Paris. Of course, I'll go to you two, Greg and Gary. Let's start off with Phil Spencer in the comments being made about buying Nintendo. Sure. Anything wowing to you? Are you stunned by that? Is this business as usual for a trillion dollar company to be looking at others to possibly purchase and acquire? I mean, you, that's, you nail it at the end, right? Like, that's what I think so many of these documents and emails and like, here's this list of 34 companies we've looked into buying or whatever. Looking at buying is like such a nebulous thing. So yeah, no shit that Phil would like to buy Nintendo. <laughs> I'll, I, you know, leak my emails. I'd love to buy IGN one day. Like, you know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not how it's going to go. But it's like, I understand from his perspective, from Xbox perspective to look into that and yeah, like when they got a quote from Sega about like, oh, we wouldn't agree if they came. For, it's like, well, they weren't, to Paris's point, really approaching Sega. It was a question, a thought. What would we think? You have to run those checks before you start even any any kind of relationship entering into that stuff. So, no, a lot of this stuff, I, f- I feel, falls into the, yeah, yeah, I'd expect that. I, you know, I mean, I, if, if tomorrow Jim Ryan's emails leaked from PlayStation, I'm sure as shit there's ones in there about the PlayStation 6 and what it might be or what it might not be and how that'll change. Like, it's business as usual. Gary, yeah, you feel the same way about that? I, so, I, I mean, just starting at the top, I have, I have a lot of thoughts about it in general. Obviously, it was it was shocking that all this stuff got leaked. It was really unfortunate that it, it really was something, it, it was as stupid as like essentially someone accidentally clicking reply all, right? Mm-hmm. It was that dumb that all this stuff uh, came out. Um, and... I feel, I feel really bad for them. I, 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 in, in situations like this, I don't think of it as like a mega corporation. I just think of like all the people the that people. work really hard on these things. And yeah. like, it's like when, you know, when The Last of Us got leaked. So I just, yep. oh man, those people work really hard to like give this to us. And now it's kind of been spoiled. Yep. And I just feel bad for the people behind it. Um, in terms of, you know, the uh, Microsoft, you know, damage control after the fact, I can't, it's, it's, you have to take all of that with a pinch of salt. Like they, 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 those, those plans may be outdated. They may not be, but like, they were never going to say, oh, you got us. Like those are all about plans. <laughs> yeah. like, all right, I'll we'll see in 2028. True, true or not. They, they were going to say like, oh, well, these may not be like real, you know, don't, don't take, don't put too much stock in, in this. 
Um, the Nintendo rumors and stuff like that, again, I don't take that seriously. I've been around long enough to know that this kind of stuff, as Greg says, gets batted around all the time. Most of the time, it never reaches like a serious level. Like, it's just, hey, what if we did this? What if we did yep. that? Like, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, that kind of stuff is, is cheap. Um, the stuff that I found most interesting was the stuff that looked like it could actually be real. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it in terms of whether or not it's right. I was looking at it in terms of like, what if this were real? Like, what would my reaction to it be? And the two, the two things that stuck out to me were like the, the Xbox Series X system refresh, yep. which I really liked. They, they, they were two, as you know, you go back and look previous X casts, things that I said, the two things that I wanted were a, a Series S refresh with more storage. They've done that. Yeah. And then an, a Series X with, uh, at a lower price without a physical drive. And it, and it just makes sense to me. Of course. Like, you know, Sony, the PlayStation 5 has that mm -hmm. skew. I still don't, I have no idea if the, if the disk drive in my Series X even works because I've never put a disk in it because I'm just not a disk yeah. guy, right? So like to take the, take the drive out, for, there are many people like me that don't need the drive, yeah. don't want to have to pay the premium for a, for a part they're never going to use. Um, I did, you know, the, cylindri the, the cylindrical, you know, kind of almost mm -hmm. like the old trash can Apple Mac Pro, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, think, I, think we, I think that's one thing that we will see. It might not look exactly like that, but I think we will see a disc free like a digital edition of the series x at a lower price point 399 or whatever it is um and then the thing that i thought was most interesting it's been my, been on my mind lately because i've been pay, playing a bit more playstation is the revised controller yes because uh -huh. again one of the uh -huh. things we said early on when, at the start of this generation was i've never really liked the dual shot controllers the dual sense controller though i do really like yeah um i still prefer my offset sticks on on the xbox controller but what that what the dual sense controller does with with <laughs> The haptics. infinitely more sophisticated haptics, yeah. mm. um, and you know the, the ability Adaptive to pipe sound triggers. through the, the, the pi piping the sound through the controller. Yeah. So like as you know, you, as everybody, I, I, I like like many of us have been playing Spider Man Two. Mm -hmm. Obviously, can't talk about it in detail because we're under embargo. But I will say in in the main, it's the first time I've played, picked up a PlayStation controller and played a PS5 game for the first time. I've been playing mostly Xbox this year, True. Diablo, you know, Party Animals. I've, I've been a, I've been very Xboxy. I picked up the DualSense for the first time in ages. And when the controller starts doing, uh, you're reminded of like what makes the, the that it does. Like, Holy special. shit! Yeah, this yeah. controller is actually fucking cool. Yeah, like those haptics yeah. are actually. And again, I won't get into specifics. I'll talk. Yeah, this isn't specific at all. Yeah, remember yeah, the yeah. first Spider-Man Spider -Man had it as well. When, yeah. Like phone calls come through <laughs> the controller, yeah, and there are certain certain actions that you do in the game. I literally gave the controller to Leah at one point and said, Feel "Do this, this thing." Yeah, and she went, yeah. "Oh wow, that's really cool." The Xbox controller is no. The Xbox controller just buzzes, right? And I said before, like, Xbox need to match that. And it seems like they agree. And a lot of the stuff they, that they are thinking about for this mid-generation controller refresh, if that is in fact what it is, is to try and bring it into parity with the DualSense. Because right now, that is, I think, a big... Um, if you're looking for the... There aren't a lot of differentiators, I don't think, between the PlayStation 5 and the Series X. But one you can definitely point to is, if you don't mind the stick configuration and the feel of the controller, the DualSense is just a, a more, much more sophisticated controller. And I would can love I, Xbox to have that stuff as well. Can I be devil's advocate on what you just said, Gary? Because no. the, the game, yeah, no. <laughs> this again goes to the whole point of this leaking out and not. we don't necessarily know if this is a real thing, but let's just pretend for a second that it is. You do that mid, I, I don't think it's a good idea to do it middle of the generation because I think it almost splinters the community in that way where you have people like, you know, we're joking around, like we got all these controls, like we got all these ton of controllers, there's an elite controller already, but then now you're gonna introduce this new controller that does these other things that games are gonna have to be either patched or developed to make, to take advantage of. How realistic is that if you can't guarantee that everybody in the community has that controller? You know what I mean? Versus on the PlayStation 5, we know everyone has a dual sense. I almost think, and this is my personal opinion, but I almost think it makes more sense, sure, do a controller like that. I'm all for it, but you probably need to wait until the next Xbox mm. to do so. Well, allow, me, allow, me, to, allow me to devil's advocate your devil's sure. advocate. Do it. Sure. Um, I would make the argument that it is, it is fine to bring it in mid uh, refresh uh, or mid generation for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't like, again, I'm using Spider Man 2 as a baseline. There's yeah. nothing in there that is like, oh, if you took that away, the game wouldn't function. That's like, what I was going to say. There's nothing that the game depends. It's nice to have, but it's a bonus, right? That's the thing, and right? So Where, yeah, the, you the, the, the game would work just the same, except you wouldn't have those. They're bells and whistles, that's all it is, but exactly. they're very nice bells and whistles. But it's not like, oh, we can't I would think produce this game because it, because it requires <laughs> well, these features yes. and not everyone has those controllers. So that's one thing. The other thing I would argue is that Microsoft already split this generation with the Series S. 
Baldur's Gate 3, I'm telling you, is the thin end of the wedge with the, oh, the Series S now is not going to have split screen. And like they, they, that's the first crack in. My prediction is that over the uh, rest of this generation, you're going to see more of a divergence between what the Series S version of the mm -hmm. game is like and what the Series X mm -hmm. version of the game is like. Series S has to be prioritized a lot because what, what did we learn? Like 75% of Xbox current generation sales, Series S, that's a lot. That's a lot. So Series S is no joke, and they've always they've got to continue to take it seriously. But when they when that first crack in the wall appeared, and they said, "Okay, Baldur's Gate," we said that these games would would always be the same, Console apart parody. from like yep. frame rate and performance and stuff. Here's but here's the first example of a major major game. We, we all know that Baldur's Gate Three is going to be Game of the Year in, the, in a lot of places, and it's a, it has to be on Xbox. The only way to do it though is okay. Here's the first major feature differentiation that's that's taken place between the Xbox Series S and the X Series X versions. So my argument perhaps would be that's already happening in a way that is much more substantial than whether or not my controller vibrates in a certain way. No, so why and, not and, do and it? you're right. And and again, we're just obviously just playing devil advocate back and forth, but but I will say that I'm looking at it more from a developer, especially third party standpoint, where why am I going to waste the time and resources to put in that extra buzzing of the controller or whatever it's gonna do? if I can't guarantee that everybody that picks up that, that has an Xbox has that controller to take advantage of. And I almost think of it in the way when they had connect and then decided, well, we're going to decouple it from every console. Then it just quickly died because you could not guarantee that every, every person had connect. So that's, why am I wasting that's true, time? But again, connect it? had far bigger problems. Well, than, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. But, but, I think you're already seeing that though, Paris, right? Because you are seeing games that are third party that are on PlayStation that are on Xbox do more of haptics on PlayStation, obviously, and not do it. can't do it on Xbox. Right. So I feel like not that development's ever as easy as flipping a switch, turning it on, but I right, think right. there'd be ways that you're already doing that work. So why not get Reg more regardless of, of when it comes in? Cause Paris, I know you're playing Spider-Man two as well right now. You know what I'm talking about with the haptics mm -hmm. and the sound coming through the controller. It's really cool. And ha again, having spent most of the year playing Xbox and then picking up a place. I was like, Oh man, actually no PlayStation's they win this one. Like, like if you're looking at like who wins this, this, this controllers, yeah. PlayStation won it this generation. So in the when it get, comes yeah. in, I, I want Xbox to have those bells and whistles. I like that. Yeah. I, I was actually out of all of the leagues. That was the one that I was most stunned at. I am on the side of, I don't think I need a new controller. I think what they have right now is a great line. I agree on Paris's devil's advocate that we don't need to introduce another one till the next gen personally, but I love what you're bringing up on I that. I mean, the next I, gen I could be it. like seven, eight years away. And that's another one we're going to talk about here with the leaks. Of course, you brought up the mid-generation refreshes, right? And as we all talked about, that wasn't stunning to me, right? What we have proven the past two or three generations of consoles is we're going to get a mid-gen update, right? I think due to COVID supply issues and how we kind of rolled out this new gen, it still feels kind of fresh, but in reality, we're midway through, and it is time years in, yeah. almost for a new one, right? And that is what we saw possibly two new mid-gen refreshes coming in 2024. Uh, Gary, you talked about it, the Brooklyn and the Elwood. That is the Xbox Series S will get an update and the Xbox Series X right there. Both coming in at the same price points, though, Paris. So removing that disk drive, not reducing the price of that Brooklyn, a.k.a. the Xbox Series X at all. 500 and 300 looking at August and October 2024 for the rollout of both those consoles. A big one they were pushing was sustainability with 100% recycled packaging, reduced PSU power, and new low power uh, standby mode and more. Uh, of course, a big one is sustainability with that team over there trying to go big green for the green console. But also... I mean, the storage, like you brought up, Gary, looking at two terabytes of storage for the Xbox Series X. Because I've, I've got refresh. the expansion card in my Series X, and I don't have it in the one, in my other one. And yeah, you, yeah. You, like, you, you can, yeah, the difference is clear. What, yeah. I must have missed it in the leak, Doc, because I was going through them. What was, what's the Series S refresh? Because obviously they've already done that now with the, with the black one. What's the next refresh that, that leaked out? Yeah, that they so the do? Series well, The black S, one, right, is just cosmetic. And that's just cosmetic. Hard drive. That one has one terabyte in it. The Series S refresh, the Elwood that I see right here, will deliver Gen 9 console gaming with more internal storage, faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, and more immersive controller. So it is touting just more internal storage for one for one terabyte, so more than what the standard S is, not this new kind of secondary one that we're looking at right here. Same price point of $299. The big ones that you will see is a new Southbridge to uh, modernize the I.O., better Wi-Fi, and that's about so, it. I mean, those are all one. very uh -huh. little tweaks, right? I, I would the, the, the most significant refresh 
that the Series S, I would argue, has already happened. The biggest problem with the Series S was the 512 mm, mm. gigs, right? And they've, they've, they've fixed yeah, that yeah. with this one. So. Yeah, I, I don't see many, like, wowing factors on the Elwood, the Xbox Series S update, right? Nothing blows my mind over there, as opposed to the Xbox Series X one without the disk drive. And I think that's where a lot of our audience and the gamer consumers as a whole has a big disconnect here of, Hey, are we going all digital? Are we holding on to physical? When are we going to make that true switch? And I think a lot of people get caught up in that. It does seem like the Xbox Series X with the disc drive will still be available for people that don't want to go all digital. But it would be the same yet. price as the one without the disc that, drive? That's, that's weird, what it though, because it's only has $100 difference between yeah. the two, right? Yeah. Something to think about. I don't know. Of the course. other thing I'd love them to do, and this is uh, this is just more of a supply chain price of components thing, but it's like... Like they have to find a way to force down the price of the expansion card because it's still out. What, what are they? Are they still charging like a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks for that it, thing? It's still a little pricey. We have now introduced others that are allowed to start selling their own, so right. we're just not on just the one itself. So prices are going to start to fluctuate, but I haven't seen a massive discount yet, Gary, mm -hmm. on what you're looking for there. Yeah, but that discless Series X, I like that. And then of course you talked about the next gen. 2028, the big words there was to develop a next generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and cloud to deliver cloud. deeper immersion and entirely new classes of game experiences. Not much on this. There was no look. There was no real big drive on this. Just kind of that with a little bit of information on what could be the hardware and then graphics innovation. You saw next gen direct X ray tracing, dynamic global illumination and more there. But 2028, I think, is the big one you look at. It's like, okay, that's the date that they were possibly aiming for if this was still to stay exactly, and hold. Yeah. Which sounds about right to me. Eight-year cycle? Right? Yeah, yeah, seems right. Doesn't yeah. blow my mm -hmm. mind. Uh, another interesting one there, The Elder Scrolls Six, an Xbox exclusive. Damn it! You know, we oh, that's right. About, yeah, that was Who would have called one. it? You know, <laughs> with Bethesda and, of course, that acquisition of ZeniMax, we talked about legacy titles. What is a legacy title? Is it their ongoing um, games as a service games like ESO and more. Yeah. Will we see games like Skyrim and beyond in the Elder Scrolls universe still come to PlayStation? It looks like right now that it will be just Xbox exclusive coming off the heels of Starfield. Do you guys agree with that? Do you feel like maybe we should change that and open it up to everyone for more sales? Maybe. I mean, you know, when, if you remember back when the Bethesda deal first happened, we talked a lot about this, like Call of Duty. I think we always knew it was going to, it was always going to be multi-platform and it ended up like it had to be, right? Because the FTC thing would never have gone through without it. Uh, whether, whether, regardless of what Microsoft's plans originally were going to be, they had to commit to making that game multi-platform. And, and they'll make billions of dollars selling it on PlayStation and Nintendo platforms, as well as on the PC um, and Xbox. Um, St Starfield and things like that, where it's like totally new. Yeah. That's in the other camp. Well, yeah, that can be exclusive to Xbox because no, nothing's been taken away from anyone, right? It's not like, oh, you used to have this, but now you don't. Yeah. Elder Scrolls, though, is the first case like, oh, you did, you did, you did used to be able to play the Elder Scrolls games on PlayStation, but you won't be able to going forward. So that's kind of the first <laughs> example of like, oh, Microsoft's being a bit, you know, oh, they like make, oh, they like making money. Yeah. Uh, big, you know, big surprise. Shocking. But like, yeah, I, again, I think, it, I think it was inevitable. Um, and you know, well, I think you'll, I think there's a very good chance you will see that with doom and Wolfenstein and the other, I, I think there's a very good chance the next doom is Xbox exclusive. And then, and, and the next Wolfenstein game is Xbox exclusive and the next fallout may well be Xbox. Paris, exclusive. you're nodding your head. You agree with all that? Hey, you, you know me, I've been yeah. saying this since 2020, you don't spend $7.5 billion to keep things the same. <laughs> so excuse me. I fully expect things like Elder Scrolls, Doom, Wolfenstein to be Xbox exclusive. Call of Duty is the outlier because of everything that Gary said, where this deal isn't even happening if they tried to pull that away. But I think all bets are off when it comes to Bethesda. So yeah, I, I fully expect them to see those type of IPs just be exclusive, especially the single player ones. Multiplayer ones makes more sense, obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, to keep on multiple platforms, but the single player experiences, yeah, they're, they're, they're just going to make it's them interesting. exclusive Xbox. It is interesting that those other, like, don't, like Doom, Fallout, Wolfenstein, those uh, Elder Scrolls, those are massive, those are all like quadruple, mm -hmm. like, triple, mega franchises, right? But there was, there was no, as far as, I didn't follow the, the case that closely, but I felt like Microsoft did not have to make the same representations because Call of Duty is, 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 in a, is in a class of its own. Yeah, right? it is, Call it of is. Duty and Grand Theft Auto are probably the two that are in a, they're in a category of one, right? There's, the only, there's only a, 
one or two games in the world that are at that level. Call Fortnite. of Duty is one of them. So that was a special case. But like at no point did the judge or anyone else say, I'm really about, worried about but, Wolfenstein. Yeah, but what about yeah. no, but Doom? No, Doom's no joke. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but it's not Call of Duty, right? Well, Those are the ones that had to be carved out separately. You had to make exceptions. Well, we have Greg on the opposite side over with the PlayStation audience. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, represents PlayStation. I love you. XOXO. PS, I love you. Go check it out. Hey, can I come on PlayStation? Of course, yeah. sometime. Yeah, because I've been playing. I'll come and talk about Spider Man. Yeah, post Spider Man. Yeah, come on. Uh, uh, you know, what does the PlayStation audience feel about this? Have you noticed a big? You know, we had a lot of groaning and expectations leading up to it. Now Starfield is out. Do you no, still think it's... the PlayStation audience hurts without it? Do you think they worry about the new Elder Scrolls, a game that's yeah, so beloved? Because you just went. Oh, uh, but here? like, you'll just, gonna, you'll just go play it on Xbox. It's not going to. Yeah, no, people. no. There are many PlayStation gamers that this will affect. Right? Sure, I mean, like, it's, there's a couple different threads you're tugging on there, yeah. right? Where yes, exclusivity of any kind, whether it's PlayStation having exclusivity with Insomniac now and Spider Man, or if you want to jump to Xbox and Bethesda and Starfield and now Elder Scrolls. Like, yes, there's. It's not hard to turn an argument and talk about how that sucks. It yeah. sucks that you can't get on your platform of choice. Yada yada yada. But it's also the reality the business and what games are and how games get made bethesda got bought by xbox to make for a lot of money to make a lot of money for them and so they're going to do that in whatever way makes sense for them if xbox continues to trail over the next decade in terms of it maybe that sh shakes it up and it does go somewhere and blah, blah blah but right now they're trying to make moves to get you to buy an xbox so i think there was a lot of grumbling when they got announced right because change is never well received but now that it's settled the starfield is out and this is the status quo i think it was expected when it became like a new service like oh yeah, I guess we didn't know that, but didn't we know that? And yeah. I think it's a reach when people are like, oh, they said they wouldn't take anything away. And it's like, well, right. yeah, they're not taking Skyrim off of your PlayStation. They're saying, yeah, they're the next, yeah the that's next a one, bit yeah. of a stretch to be yeah. like, well, it's an Elder Scrolls game. And we've had, it's like, they're not taking away ESO. They're me, not taking away thing you are currently invested. Let me, let me ask you this and try and, and try to do it from, from the other side. Sure. Sony yeah. bought Bungie. Yeah. Right, which is also a, you could argue about whether or not that's as big an acquisition as Bethesda, but it's a very big acquisition. Destiny's huge, right? Yeah. Do you th do you think that if there's a Destiny three, that will also be on the Xbox, or would, or would Sony do so? No, it's PlayStation now. now what's happening? Where, did they say what was going on with Marathon? I know that's, that's something PlayStation new. Exclusive, yeah. Yeah. So, I, so yeah, again, yeah. that would be in the same way that Starford was. But what about, for example, a theoretical Destiny three? It's not, 3? It's what not exclusive. Do? It's not. No. I can't remember. Marathon's mul Marathon is multi-platform, and just to clarify that with Bungie, when the acquisition went down, Bungie stated all their games will stay multi-platform. Okay. So, that's, so that adds, actually is a different approach than what Microsoft is But doing. again, then we're easing back into, I mean, as we want to argue and go a million different ways, we're easing back into the argument of a multiplayer game versus a single-player game. Yeah. Right, yeah, where again, yeah. like... Well, That's why I think it's different. Every game is a service and multiplayer. On a multiplayer struggle, game, right? you want Let's get as many people the in there. Yeah, possible. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with PlayStation doubling down on this live service business, right? Where they want all these different games. Well, my final one I want to ask you, Greg, on the opposite side, of course, we talk about legacy titles and Zenimax, right? There was rumor slash part of the leak was Fallout 3 and Elder Scrolls 4, The Oblivion, getting remastered. Yeah. Do you expect that to be multi-platform? When we think about those and we think about going back to the well and remastering these games, is this something that you anticipate being on PlayStation as well? That's a great question, Mike. I hadn't thought much about it, mm -hmm. right? If I'm Phil and I'm them, I would say no. Like, I'm trying to get, especially for, like, we're bringing out Fallout 3. Yeah. Arguably the most yeah, beloved yeah. Fallout. You know what I mean? The one that really, for a lot of people, I'm not trying to knock Oblivion or Morrowind or anything, but the one that really was like, holy shit, this is Bethesda? This is this? You know what I mean? Like, I would feel you'd want to keep that close to your chest and you'd want them coming to xbox and you want them using game pass i wouldn't be shocked i guess if they were like no it's going everywhere because we want money and everywhere but the counter argument would be though in terms of taking things away from people you could you could you could say that that's even kind of more pernicious it's like oh you loved playing oblivion on the uh, on the playstation right well now that the remaster's coming out you got to go to the xbox to play it like that well here's where you had it but now you don't was Oblivion? Was it on PlayStation? I was never an Oblivion guy, and no, I got it, there. It was no, Oblivion exclusive. was not. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're that just talking about Fallout. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, again, so Fall, you, so Fall Fallout's a better Fall example. Game. But yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, you love Fallout 3. You love uh, New Vegas. You enjoy have good times playing those on the PlayStation. Here comes the remaster, but not for your PlayStation anymore. Yeah. But again, though. Welcome to 2024. It's about money. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And the final one I want to talk about, of course, we did see a slide of Xbox Gaming and Beyond. They showed a lot of things from browser to mobile, smart TVs, uh, a streaming stick, a cloud device, consoles, high-end PCs, but also smack dab in the middle, handhelds. Paris Lilly, do you think 
it is time for the Xbox team to get into handhelds. You are the king of handhelds right now. You have about three of them in your house. Do you think Xbox <laughs> is going to get involved? But to, to that exact point, no, because you already have an ROG, a Rogue Ally. You already have a Steam Deck. They already, again, especially with, with the Rogue Ally, it's a native Game Pass machine. You remember we were even talking about, sorry, Gary, but we were talking about that in Vegas. Um, that That's all right, Paris. They're, right, they're already doing it. So I don't think they need their own because they already have third-party vendors that are giving them the hardware that's allowing them to have a mobile Xbox experience. I don't think so. I, I think they should just continue to keep doing that. Hand, the handheld is, handheld is such a weird space, right? We've seen handhelds come and go. I know Greg's got a lot of feelings about many handheld consoles Don't that he's start. loved over the years that are now dead, dead and gone. Um, Nintendo obviously really owns that space right now in terms of like sure. a dedicated handheld gaming experience. Um, but there's, but the, we have seen this kind of weird resurgence, right? With the Steam Deck, with the Ally. Um, with, with the, the backbone. With the, with the largest, the G Cloud that yeah. I had been mm -hmm. playing with. And that's obviously a cloud only system, but like, I don't know. It seems like people, it seems like there's, there's that handheld is kind of like weirdly coming back, but like through the side door. The thing about it is like the handheld is dead as we know it, right? Switch changed the game and yep. now streaming has changed the game and remote play has changed the game of we don't want a Xbox handheld. We want our Xbox in our hands, period. That's what, that's why What's I'm, the difference between those two things. I don't want, I don't want there to be like, it, it needs to be the switch where it's my console and it's my handheld. It right. needs to be the exact, it needs to be, I don't want new games that are just running on a handheld. I want my Xbox games that I already play right. in the, it needs to be one ecosystem, one thing like that. Right. And so I think that Xbox and everybody for that matter really is banking on cloud and really banking on remote play in a way that internet's just going to keep getting better. So this will be a moot point, hopefully in knock on wood five what, years. What do you think of that Sony thing? PlayStation Portal. Yeah, I'm very excited for it. Like I, but I am the remote play guy. That's why I, I'm like, oh my god, I love this X screen so much, right? Because for me, it is. I love nothing better than sitting down next to Jen, popping on the backbone on my phone, and trophy hunting, grinding out whatever side mission while she watches Grey's Anatomy, and then she goes to bed, and I go downstairs to my console and I play there. Right. And so, like the PlayStation Portal, a sexier screen than what I've been using with my phone, uh, with my backbone, a dedicated device. I'm all for it. I Very can't different wait for use. It. Again, though, not a true handheld because you're not. When you see like people using a Nintendo Switch yep. or like the old Game Boy, yep. the Game Boys, whatever, in the, back in the day, they're at they're at the park. They're on a plane. You're not doing that with a with a portal exactly. or with a G Cloud. You're doing you're, you're doing it with a street a, a Steam Deck yeah. or a, or an Ally. And again, yeah. again, battery becomes the of course. You know, like if you have battery anxiety, like I I don't I won't I won't even go. But there. that's why it's like what, it such an interesting spot to be in right now where we're at right where it's like yes i wish i want a playstation 5 nintendo switch i want a yep. playstation 5 that just comes with me and is ready to go right that is that but where we're at right now again with the x screen like it's one of those well i'm not in the back seat like i was as a kid while my parents drive playing stuff right so it's like on a plane i'm there when i was waiting for my flight popped in one of the plugs there they're all over the place now so there's like so many different ways to Battery anxiety hadn't been an issue for me either with my original Switch because, of course, I could charge right there and I bought a brick that I could put it on. And then even my Steam Deck where it's like, well, I have the big brick I can carry for a power battery or I can plug it in. Da, 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 da. Does the portal work with the cloud or does it only work if you're like in the room with a, with a PlayStation? Well, it's remote play, so you can do through Wi-Fi. It's not doing cloud like natively playing from the cloud to it. But you could if I theoretically and they say this is one of my preview, they're like, all you need is Wi-Fi, so it's like you could be. Doesn't in the PlayStation have that cloud architecture though? You can't play PlayStation games Correct. in the cloud. It do, they do, and you cannot on the you cannot on the portal. You, why that makes why wouldn't you do that? Because the portal is already using the internet to get to the remote play room. It's just remote play, so you need to dial into a PlayStation Five. You can't. Mm -hmm. room, why you can't, not also have a chip in whatever it is that goes into the? I would assume, you do the other thing. I would assume money, and I would assume performance. I would assume the okay. price point's going to go up, and we're going to lose performance. That's on a one very of limited. You know, remote play. I mean, I get, I get yeah. it. For, for people like you who want to sit on yeah. the couch and just play because you know Jen's watching the, the using the big screen or whatever. Sure. Great, but like I think the the majority of use case for a handheld is out of the home on the go where that thing you are, suddenly is going to lose. I do not argue that with you. Okay. I, I, so I do think it is very much a. Uh, that's what we've said about the portal from the jump. Is like. There is a use case, and I just happen to be fucking bullseye on it. Right. And I think there are other people like me, and people are excited and interested. In but a lot of PlayStation gamers that might be excited about like a, a, a fully cloud functional PlayStation Five in 100%. your hands are going to look at the portal and go, "I have no use for that." One hundred percent. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. But Gary, uh, I also am like, the portal's perfect for me. Like, I think that there's a bunch of us 
where our wives have there control are of the TVs, of you know? <laughs> Sorry, say that again, Kevin? I, said th- I think there's a bunch of us where our wives have total control of the TV, and we're like, we can't play games because it's like, hey, she wants to watch Veep. I guess we're watching Veep. I mean, you, or you, you could put your foot down. No, no. <laughs> I, I know where, where my battles are. You know That's what I mean? a wrap on the X cast, everybody. <laughs> that is the end of this week's kind of funny X cast. You have some great games hitting Game Pass right now, like Gotham Knights on Cloud PC and your Xbox Series X and S. Guess what? If you want 60 frames with Gotham Knights on PC, thanks to Game Pass, there you go. Jump in. The Lamplighters League is now on Cloud PC and Xbox Series S, along with Warhammer 40K Dark Tide. If you're looking for a fun co op game, that's on Cloud and Console over there. Forza Motorsport will come to Cloud PC, Xbox Series X, and S on October 10th. Keep an eye out for that one. From Space is hitting Cloud, Console, and PC October 12th. And then October 17th, here's a big one for you a good deal. Like a Dragon Ishin oh. is coming to cloud, console, and PC. That's another big win on the third-party Game Pass deals. Crack them open. I want to see them. Paris? Just one before we get out of here. Yeah. I, I have to give a shout-out to this. I was fortunate enough that I got to reunite this, with this one of Lana Pierce, oh. Bruce Green, Susie the Spear Hunter on uh, Prime Gaming on their Crown channel on, on Twitch. And uh, we got to go to Night City. We got to dress up, do the whole thing. We got to debate Cyberpunk 2077 lore. And uh, it, it was a blast, oh, man. Yeah. Two-hour show. Tr- Trish was hosting. We had a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, I saw about um, that. that. Thank yeah. you, Paris, because I watched that live. You were incredible. The whole team was incredible. Shout out yeah. to the wardrobe team for getting yeah. you a dope jacket, Paris. Yeah, you looked yeah, fly as can be. And yeah, that was a really fun time, Paris. So good job on that. Congratulations. I'm telling you, I just got my new 4090 PC, super yeah, ultra wide yeah. monitor. Cy- Cyberpunk's time has come. Oh, for me. it's yes. time, Gary. How long have I been saying, I'm waiting for that moment yeah. where Cyberpunk is going to be the game that I wanted it to be. I, yeah. I feel like we're there now. So I'm ready to go. I got you jazzed up on a PC. Paris, you just got, you're powered by NZXT now, correct? Wait, what's going on there? What yeah. was that box that you got? Oh, oh, you didn't see, you didn't see the video. So yeah, I partnered up with NZXT. They hooked, they hooked me up uh, with the new PC build. They're, they're, what is it? They're Player 3 Prime. And uh, yeah, 4090, i9, 13900, mm-hmm. the, the Elite, Kraken, all, all in one color. It's, it's a beast, man. It's, it's a monster. We'll talk about it more. Okay, well, it's my episode. turn. Hey, anybody out there with a PC, help me out. Okay, these two are PC gaming. Help me out. I need some help. But as you can see, there's Gary opening up the Xbox Elite Series 2, themed after the blue Corvette controller and the yellow Cadillac. Check that out. So these are both Forza? Those are both Forza related style. for you. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for Almost watching. Almost as good as going to Vegas. Week. This is oh, even better. Saves you the trip. You haven't heard the last of that. I'm, I'm having that T-shirt made, by the way. <laughs> I can't wait to see <laughs> You're going to be seeing me wear that on the X-Cast. You're the best, everybody. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll catch you back here next week. Goodbye, everybody.